الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي خلق الإنسان في أحسن تقويم الحمد لله الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفطية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحلل والحرام ما حرم والدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سجدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والبلد الطيب يخرج نباته بإذن ربه والذي خبث لا يخرج إلا نكدا كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يشكرون وقال جل وعلا ولقد مكناكم في الأرض وجعلنا لكم فيها معايش قليلا ما تشكرون وقال جل وعلا ولقد آتينا داود منا فضلا يا جبال أوبي معه والطير وألنا له الحديد أن اعمل سابغات وقدر في السرد واعملوا صالحا إني بما تعملون بصير ولسليمان الريح غدوها شهر ورواحها شهر وأسلنا له عين القطر ومن الجن من يعمل بين يديه بإذن ربه ومن يزغ منهم عن أمرنا نذقه من عذاب الشديد يعملون له ما يشاء من محاريب وتماثيل وجفان كالجواب وقدور الراسيات اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله له خير وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن إن أصابته السراء شكر فكان خير الله وإن أصابته الضراء صبر فكان خير الله أخرجه الشيخان في صحيحهما أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful I beg of his mercy his his kindness his compassionate his uh, infinite bounties and I seek protection from the devil from the evils of the devil and everything that comes with the evil of the devil I ask Allah to send salutations upon the chosen one Muhammad his companions his family members and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment and I greet you with the greeting of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Respect your brothers and sisters as we move on in our daily life and each day that laps upon us an individual he is surrounded with many bounties and blessings of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jal explains and elaborates the legacy of Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam the prophets of the Almighty that an individual is supposed to follow and deduce lessons from his for him or for her from their lives why because they were individuals who became the examples for humanity until the day of judgment they became those people who Allah selected these are those people that you select and you go and find guidance through their lifestyle. These are those people who Allah the Almighty says we have showered our mercy upon. We have given them the full blessings. We have given them the full uh, bounties of ours. And you are supposed to look into their lives and deduce lesson for yourself. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in another place on the Quran about these great people. <clears throat> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that these were those people who selected their lives to focus on the life of your after. Inna akhlasnahum bi khalisatin dhikr al-dar, wa innahum indana lamin al-mustafin al-akhyar, and they have been selected in our sight. One of the greatest quality that we find in the legacy of the prophets 
that their worship to Allah was not due to the fear of Allah. Today, a portion lies in our life that a person prays when he says, because I don't want to burn in hell. I don't want to burn in hell. Neither their worship to Allah was fulfillment of obligation. I am praying because Allah has ordered me to pray and I need to fulfill that obligation of the Almighty. Their worship to Allah the Almighty was solely to show gratitude to the Allah, to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A big portion of the life of individual which a person needs in this world from the time he arrives to the time he leaves and even when he is in his grave when he will be standing in front of Allah on the day of judgment being reckoned of the life that he has spent or she has spent in this world and in fact the action that a person will continuously do even in Jannah it's called shukr. You know, in, in Jannah, there is no ibadat, there is no worship. There is no worship. Because it, it's the place of enjoyment. Darul Jaza. A house where you get all the reward of the efforts that you have made in this world. It's the place of enjoyment. But what enjoyment you will have if you are not able to show your thanks to those who have to the, to the one who is giving you those happiness? So this this shukr in the life of individual, many of times, for every individual, and I'm including myself in it, we find the real bounty after you don't have it with you. Health is a great bounty of Allah. But when a person becomes sick, he realizes how great of a bounty that Allah had given him. He's able to move around. He's able to travel. He's able to go from one place to another place without realizing that how great of a bounty Allah has given him. But the minute this individual becomes sick, he becomes ill, he becomes immo immobile, he becomes very feeble. Then what happens? A trip from the bed to the bathroom becomes a burden. A trip from the bed to the bathroom becomes a burden. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu dhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum. That O people, there are many bounties of the Almighty that is coming upon you on a daily basis. Understand, adhere, and think about it. Because in the nature of human being, Allah mentions, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودٍ Indeed, human being, he is kanud towards his Lord. What is kanud? Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Ra'is al-Mufassireen explains, that Kanud is that individual who uses the favor but forgets the one who has favored him. He uses the bounty, he uses the favor, but forgets the one who has favored him. He completely ignores the individual or the being who had given him that and only focuses on using what he has been given. This individual is considered to be kanud in the terminology of Quran. So Allah mentions in the insana li rabbihi la kanud. That human being he very forgets. Ibn Hisham narrates the hadith, narrates the narration in his seerah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah azza wa jal put down the whole creation in front of him and he said, Oh Adam, these are your children. So when Adam alayhi salatu was salam looked at the children of his, there was a very handsome boy, a very smart boy, a very attractive individual from his progeny that Adam alayhi salatu was salam saw 
and he inquired about him to Jibra'il that who is this? So Jibra'il said, this is your son Dawood. Dawood alayhi salam. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam said to Allah that, oh Allah, this son of mine, he is very attractive, he is very smart, he is very intelligent. I would like to contribute 40 years of my life to this son of mine. So whatever the amount of life you are giving me, I will take 40 years from that life and I will give it to this child. Because I want him to prosper. I want him to do good, more good in this world. So Allah said, okay. Because these are the prophets of Allah, whatever they asked, Allah gave them. Life carried on. When the time of Adam salam's lifespan finished, the angel came to take his soul. He said, well, I have 40 years left. I have 40 years left. At that time, the angel reminded Adam salam, and he said, that remember the time when you contributed that 40 years towards your son Dawood? He said, yes, yes, I do remember, but your time is up now. On that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَنَسِيَ Adam." Adam forgot, soon his children will also forget. His children will also forget. So as a human being, we are there to forget. We use the bounty of Allah on a daily basis, but we don't understand. We always forget. This is why a reminder is needed. A reminder is needed for what? A reminder is needed for us to understand that every single day is a gift of Allah. The earth that we use is a gift of Allah. Today is Earth Day. Understanding the, the bounties around us. Everything. These are all blessings of Allah that Allah will ask us on the day of judgment. What did you do with it? How did you utilize it? Now, when it comes to the matter of thanking the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned about thanking the Almighty Allah azza wa First of all, we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his bounty without anyone asking. When a person becomes sick, Allah gives him health. There is no request that an individual needs to put to Allah that I need this. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have a calculator and you calculate the amount of air you will going to bring breathe on a single day and then you send a request to Allah or maybe send an email or a tweet or a, a, a tweet saying that I need this much amount of air to breathe today or this much amount of water I need to drink today this is why one of the one of the one of the dua that Allah subhanahu Allah Rasulullah used to make ya mubdi an ni'mah min ghayri istihqaqiha the one who gives blessings without us deserving Without us even asking. There is not a single day that we, sing, we send an appeal to Allah that, oh Allah, I need this. But every day we have it. We have the food in our plate. We have the water to drink. We have the, 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 the air around us to breathe. Every single day, every individual is utilizing different types of blessings. Different types of ni'mah. If we look around us, in fact, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, لَوْ أَنَّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِذُ بِكَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ If you were to change all the oceans in the earth into, into, into ink, and all the trees in the earth into pen, and you were to sit down and write the bounties of Allah, everything will vanish and finish, but you can never write the bounties of the Almighty. Dawud said to Allah, that, Ya Rabbi, kayfa ashkuruka wa shukri, wa shukri, wa shukri laka ni'mah. Kayfa ashkuruka wa shukri laka ni'mah. That, oh, my, oh Allah, how can I thank you? Even thanking of you, even your thank is a bounty. 
Even me thanking you is a bounty. So how I'm going to thank that bounty? Having the acknowledgement that Allah has given me this, and I need to thank Him, this is also a bounty of Allah. Because there are many individuals living on the face of this earth, they can care less to thank Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal replied to Dawood, Ya Dawood, Al-An, now you have thanked me. Get to that stage that even having the understanding of thanking Allah the Almighty. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to praise Allah and thank Him. That, oh Allah, I don't have the ability to thank you. So at least, oh Allah, the way you don't forget your servant, please make your servant don't forget you. One Sahabi radiallahu anhu by the name of Usaid bin Hudayr. Usaid bin Hudayr radiallahu anhu, <coughs> one of the very uh, distinguished companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered the Sahaba for an expedition. When he gathered the Sahaba for the expedition, and when he was lining them up, every individual was given a bag of food. Something to eat while on the journey. So while the Prophet was giving to everyone, this Sahabi Usaid was left out somehow. He didn't get it. So he said, well, you know, <coughs> maybe if the Prophet forgot or he intentionally left it, he never went and asked, felt shy. I'm not going to go and ask for a bag of food. I'll just carry on with that, maybe share it with someone or something. So the expedition left. When the expedition left, this Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu anhu, he is going with his companions, with his people, and he's making the dua to Allah. That, oh Allah, your Prophet forgot to give me and I never asked. فَإِنَّ زَادِي هُوَ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Now my food is only the remembrance of yours, which is سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ While Usaid is doing this, over there Jibreel came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said, Ya Muhammad, O Prophet عليه السلام, you gave everyone, but you didn't give Husayd. You gave everyone, but you didn't give Usaid. The Prophet sallallahu said to a companion, he says, take this and make sure you give it in the hands of Usaid. And after you give it, make sure you have your attentive ears towards his mouth. And I need to hear what he replies. So this Sahabi got onto his horse immediately ran to Usaid. And when he found Usaid, he gave him that bag of food. And he said that the Prophet has apologized because he forgot to give it to you. The Prophet has apologized because he forgot to give it to you. Usaid radiallahu anhu, when he took that bag of food, he looked to the sky. Allahumma kama la tansa Usaidin faj'al Usaidin la, la yansak. Oh Allah, like the way you made, you did not forget Usaid, make sure Usaid never forgets you also. Like the way you did not forget Usaid, make sure Usaid doesn't forget you also. So this Sahabi, he took the exact wording of Usaid and he came back to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that when I'm hearing these words from your mouth, who's a second, who's a narrator, and I can see the sky being filled with nur and light, imagine what will be the sky at the time when Usaid said those words. Understanding the bounties of the Almighty. Having the opportunity, the ability inside you to ask Allah that, oh Allah, like the way you give me everything on a daily basis, do not make me one of those that I use it and then I abuse it. I use it and then I abuse it. Muhaddithin mentioned that shukr is done in three stages. The first is with the tongue. 
that you ask, you thank, not just Allah, everyone. Man lam yashkurin nas, lam yashkurillah. The one who doesn't thank Allah, people cannot thank Allah. So for you to thank Allah, you need to understand the favors of other individual. Every day you go home, your wife puts food on your table, you think she's, it's her duty, no. You eat that food and you thank her. Your child brings you a glass of water, thank him. Bring that understanding inside you. Because by thanking, you are becoming a servant of Allah. You are worshipping Allah. If you cannot thank people, you won't thank Allah. If you are so miser in your wording of thanking individuals, how you are going to thank Allah the Almighty? So the first is to thank people from your own mouth. Number two, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qala hina asbah, the person who recites this in the morning, Allahumma ma asbah bi min ni'matin aw bi ahadin min khalqik, fa minka wahdaka la sharika lak, fa laka alhamdu wa laka shukr. Oh Allah, whatever blessings you have given me in this morning, I am there to thank you for all those blessings, oh Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qala hina asbah, the person who recites this in the morning, faqad adda shukra yawmihi, he has thanked Allah for all the bounty Allah has given him on that day. He has thanked Allah for all the bounties Allah has given him on that day. The person who will recite this in the evening, he has thanked Allah for all the bounties Allah has given him on that evening. So the first stage is to thank Allah with our mouth, with our wording. And to start off by thanking Allah, first we need to thank one another. People around us. People that we see on it. Because kindness does not start from outside the house. Kindness starts inside the house. So start thanking people who are around you. That you see on a daily basis. When you live together, you lose the value of one another too much. Because you see, yeah, whatever, it's every day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي the best amongst you is the one who is best to his family. And I am the best to my family. So your righteousness does not start outside your door. Your righteousness starts inside your house. Start thanking. And then you will understand how blessings. You know people, just by thanking them, they become so happy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, idkhalu. Sururin fi qalb al mu'mini sababun li injazil ibtila aw al umur. By giving happiness in the, or by putting happiness in the heart of another individual can become the means of your problem being solved. If you want your problems to be solved, how are you going to do that? By putting happiness in the hearts of others. If you put happiness in the hearts of others, your problems are solved. Because today the biggest problem is, in my life, is other people's happiness. Biggest problem in my life is other people's happiness. It's not my sadness. It's not my issues. It's why is he happy? Why are they happy? So we need to come off that. So number two, Ashukru bil qalb is to thank by your heart, acknowledgement of the bounty, by praising, even if you see flaws in it. Even if you see flaws in it, don't look at the negative side, look at the positive side. The first one was to thank by the tongue. Now the second one is to do by your heart. How you do that by heart? By Mentioning the positive sides of it. Don't mention the flaws of it. Because everything, everyone, even, even the food, you know, it's not going to be perfect. 
But instead of criticizing, let's start looking at the positive side of it. Start praising, mentioning the good part of it. That's how you're going to think it by heart. Today, may Allah forgive anything that we have, we always look at the one the others have. Oh, I have this. I only have iPhone 6, but he has success. I only have this car, but he has or she has more. I only, I only wear LeBron James shoes, but look at he has Jordans. What happens when you do that? You are never happy. You are never happy in your life because you always think that you have less. Even you have good, you have great because there are people living on the earth who don't even have a pair of shoes. Forget LeBron's and Jordan's. They don't have anything to wear. But you are crying over because you've got LeBron's instead of the Jordan's. How are you going to thank anything that Allah gives you? You cannot think, thank Allah because you never appreciate the bounty that Allah gave you. That's number two, with the heart. With the heart of an individual. Number three. Al-amal. Action. Now what is action? Thinking by action. It's to utilize the bounty that you have given in the pleasure of the one who has given it to you. Allah says to the Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. He was amongst those prophets who was the prophet as well as the king. Allah gave him kingdom which is you can have whatever the best on the earth. And Allah made him a prophet, so this is the best you can have towards the spirituality. So he had both the goods. And then Allah told Dawood alayhi salam, اعملوا آل داوود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكر The whole family of Dawood, make sure you practice shukr because there are very few who do shukr. And what was the shukr of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam? كَانَ يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ يَدِي Even though he was a king, but he used to work and eat. Even though he was a king. He owned all the treasures. But whatever food that will he will have in his house, Allah says, وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْسِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ We taught him how to make armors from the iron. وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الْحَدِيدِ We made iron very soft for him so he would do it without using any means and tools. كَانَ يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ يَدِي He used to work and he used to eat. And then he used to thank Allah the Almighty. أَفْزَلُ الصِّيَامِ صَوْمِ دَعْوُودِ كَانَ يَسُومُ يَوْمًا وَيَفْتُرُ يَوْمًا أَخْرَجَهُ الْبُخَارِ فِي الصَّحِيحِ The Prophet ﷺ said that the best fasting is the fasting of Dawood. He used to fast one day and he used to do iftar the other day. You can't get better than that. So the more bounties he have, the greater shukr he's doing. So number three was amal. Showing your action towards gratitude. And that is to use the bounty of the one who has given you in his favors. Whatever we have today, it's not something that we have earned through our intelligence. This is the deception of shaitan. نحن قسمنا بينهم معيشتهم في الحياة الدنيا ورفعنا بعضهم فوق بعض درجات ليتخذ بعضهم بعضا سخرية ورحمة ربك خير مما يجمعون. Allah says we have given you your sustenance. How much rich you are, Allah is the one who has given you. How much sufficient you have, that's the one Allah has given you. So now, how we can use these bounties of the Almighty in a place, in a direction, on a path which is pleasing to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
is to spend it for Allah's cause. It's to give it for Allah's cause. And that's how we are going to thank the Almighty Allah. Otherwise, there are many stories in the Quran in which Allah mentions those people who were given the bounty but they could care less what we did with them. Just on one story in Surah Al Qalam, Allah mentions, Inna balawna hum kama balawna ashab al jannah, id aqsamu la yaslimun naha musbihin, wa la yastathnun fatafa alayha ta'ifun min rabbika wa hum naimun, fa asbahat kasarim fatanadu musbihin, anigdu ala harthikum in kuntum sarimin. There was a family and a father dedicated towards their farming. Everything that was, all the crops and vegetation and, and, and fruits that were earned from that, from that land, before the father can spend on anything or anyone, the first and foremost for the needy people. This portion will go to the needy. After that, the family will come. After that, the investment will come. And after that, everything else will come. A time came when the father passed away. The children said, well, our dad went old school. He used to spend in the masjid, you know. Every month there was a deduction of $500 that used to go to the masjid. Now the father passed away. The son said, first we need to stop that deduction. First we need to stop that monthly payment to the masjid. Because... Each month, $500, you know by the end of the year, how much money it is? We can spend on something else. So the father passed away. The children said, my well, father used to give it to these needy people where it was needed and required. So let's stop that first. So before they even went to stop it, they just made the intention and all the assets were freezed. All the assets, they, they were gone. فَانْتَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ Allah says in the morning they woke up today, we're not going to give anyone. No needy people. That's it. Everything is for us. أَلَّا يَدْخُلَنَّهَا الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ وَغَدَوْا عَلَىٰ حَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا إِنَّا لَضَالُّونَ these are the verses of the Quran. Today we're not going to give it. Why? Because they don't listen. So Allah says when they woke up in the morning with that intention, when they went into their field and their farms, inna la dalun. Looks like we came to a wrong place. This is not our farm. We've lost. But then when they looked around, بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ our, All our fruits and vegetables have been lost. They have been destroyed. You know, this, this incident happened in Yemen. Until now, those historians they mention, and those people who have visited, there is a place in Yemen where this location has been preserved. And until now, this area is known as a bare land. Nothing grows, no one goes. This is called mahrumiyat. This is called being lost from Allah. This is called Allah has deprived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many things in our life. May Allah give us the ability to thank Him, to show gratitude to Him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to spend all of these great blessings for his cause. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام 
وصلي على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المقربين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حياء عثمان وأقرأهم أبي بن كعب وأعلمهم بالحلال والحرام عث بن جبل ولكل أمة أمين وأمين هذه الأمة أبو عبيد بن الجراح وروي عن معمر عن قتادة مرسلا وفيه وأقباهم عليه رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Salutations upon the chosen one, Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. And <coughs> respected brothers and sisters, it's the great blessing of Allah that Allah has granted us this blessed day of Jum'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are utilizing this blessed day and bringing good into our lives and using it for giving good to us and to give, give good to the humanity. As you know, today is the Earth Day. How can we use the Earth that Allah has given us by, by <coughs> utilizing the best of it and not doing any wastage, by saving and safeguarding and giving that same message that Allah has given us in the Quran, that Allah has given many bounties from this Earth. So use it and do shukr. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك من عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون ونعوذ بك من شر مستعاذك من عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يسجد لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأعز وأجل وهم أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة